Two of the greatest players to ever don a BYU jersey can now look up at the rafters in the Marriott Center to see their names watching over the success down below. Mel Hutchins and Roland Minson. These two guys going in together as teammates, like you said, this will only be the fourth and fifth retired jerseys and the special thing is their teammates. Hutchins and Minson co-captained the 1951 team that won the NIT championship, which at the time was considered the more prestigious postseason tournament. It also happened to be BYU's first national title in any sport. We had the kind of team that uh, if we played the ball the way we knew how to play, that we couldn't get beat. We prided ourselves on having a team that you didn't worry about who best player was. Hutchins is known for his defensive and rebounding prowess, and with just his junior and senior seasons of rebounding on record, he ranks only 22 rebounds shy of BYU's all-time record. When you rebound the ball, he said you stomp one foot in the ground, stomp the other foot, put an elbow here and an elbow here, and then wait to get hit, and then you're going to rebound the ball. Minson was one of the most clever floor generals of his time. The cat had a deadly shooting ability to go with his uncanny vision on the court. Minson was named MVP of the NIT tournament. And in the spring of 1951, the New York Times said, if there is a better player to have played in the 14 years of this NIT tournament, we haven't seen him. Mel Hutchins in this film, or in this picture, look at how he's looking at me, happy that I got that MVP. I mean, he just glowing with me. The friends were both selected in the 1951 NBA draft, with Hutchins going second overall and Minson 15th. Hutchins won Rookie of the Year and now a total of five All-Star selections. As for Minson, he left the NBA to become an officer in the Navy before finding success in the banking industry. The best part of the hill. We, we had a, a good run at the NIT and, and a marvelous college time, but it what, it what comes after that's the best part of the hill. The dynamic duo left a legacy on the court. How fitting it is that the jerseys of the two go up to the rafters together. Corey Aldis, BYU TV Sports. Thank you, Corey. It's a pleasure to welcome Rocky Steele, the author of Forgotten Champions, the story of the 1951 Brigham Young University basketball team, which of course featured those two outstanding players. Welcome to True Blue. Thanks, Dave. All right, Mel Hutchins, recruited as a football player, to BYU and, and, and yet he becomes a basketball star. How that all happened? Well, he showed up, uh, he showed up to BYU. He'd been recruited a little bit around the country um, at Harvard for football and basketball. UCLA had wanted right. him um, uh, for basketball and football. He ended up coming to BYU for football uh, out of Arcadia, California. Um, came here on a football scholarship and he had a leg injury, a little bit of cramping in the first couple weeks of practice or so at some point during his freshman season. And uh, he was running it off in the gym. And Floyd Millett, the basketball coach, saw him shooting the ball around a little bit and said, we've got to have this kid. And so he went and talked to Eddie Kimball, and they, they, they worked switched it out. him over. Yep. <laughs> now, now, Roland actually commits to the U and changes his mind, and that didn't go over so well on, on his road to Provo. Yeah, that's, uh, that's right. Roland was really highly sought after um, in basketball. Ohio State, Kansas, uh, Colorado, BYU, Utah, mm -hmm. Utah State. Um, and he ended up committing to the U uh, to the University of Utah, and then uh, just had a change of heart, wrote them a letter. And, it happens. Uh, it happens, yeah, <laughs> it happens. And, uh, and that's how he ended up in Provo. Now, in your book, you write about how he was kind of a shy guy and would, would hide in his bathroom in Idaho Falls when these coaches and recruiters would come to his, to his front door. Yeah, um, his high school coach had been um, the player of the year back in 1929, John the Cat Thompson, they called him, and right. he had endorsed him. And uh, so Roland ended up getting letters and visits from all over the country, and he would hide, he'd hide in the bathroom, and his mother would kind of make him come out and, and face the music, so to speak. So. Denver Post referring to him as the ghost with his moves ahead of his time, and he was the scoring leader here for 22 seasons. What yep. made him so good? Uh, he really, you know, when you, when you read the write-ups and you see what film there is on him, he just had moves and a quickness um, that just was uncommon at that point. He really knew how to put the ball on the deck and just move in between um, defenders, and he just, he was extremely agile. Um, 
He just, you know, he had a knack. He was ahead of his time. So Hutchins goes in after they win the NIT. He goes in as the first selection in the NBA draft. He's the rookie of the year in 1952, a four-time All-Star. Yep. And, and BYU fans, for the most part, don't even know a thing about him. This will be a yep. big week for him. But uh, I, I'm impressed by that. He and Wilk Chamberlain, to this day, the only rookies in NBA history to lead the league in rebounding their first seasons. Yeah, that's right. Um, he was absolutely dominant on the boards. And it wasn't, I mean, he was tall. He was 6'6", but there were play, a lot of players taller than him in his day. Um, but he just, he, had, he was extremely athletic and, and muscular and had a great vertical leap. He just, you know, and, and he did attribute um, the blocking out technique that he learned from Watts. Um, to really kind of, you know, propelling him forward on the re on the rebounds there. Also in this book, there's a phone call accounting yep. from Charles Barkley. How, how does that go over? Well, in 1987, so so Mel held the record um, for a player 6'6 six, six or under for rebounds right. until 1987, and then Charles Barkley broke it. Um, and Barkley called him up um, in 87, and Mel didn't, didn't know who he was because he just said, I'm, you know, I'm Charles, I broke your record, and Mel said, who are you? And he said, I'm Sir Charles. And he said, I've never heard of Sir any, Charles. anybody named Sir Charles. And, uh, and he said, I'm Charles Barkley, you crazy son of a gun. And, and said, I just broke your record. And so they kind of shared a laugh over that. Now, Minson didn't go to the NBA. He went into the service, but just to give you an idea of how good he was, the New York Times calling him the best player in the country and better than any show on Broadway yep. at the time that he rolled through the NIT. Yeah, that's right. Um, he, was, he was a big show. In fact, um, New York Times gave him rave reviews. Uh, the Denver Post, you mentioned, they did a short, um, a little BYU short um, that they showed at the at the front of uh, movies um, at that point, and they did a big feature on Minson during that, and so he got a lot of attention there as well. Saturday night, they finally are back together in the spotlight at the Marriott Center where they didn't play, uh, but Cougar fans get a chance to acknowledge them. How big of a moment will this be for these two guys who kind of enjoy their private life? Yeah, you know, that's a great point. Um, and this is a big, this is sort of a long time coming. I mean, 62 years. Um, but these are, these were two of the pioneers in BYU basketball that first put uh, our program on the map. And so they'll be there. Their families will be there. I know they have a lot of, uh, of children and grandchildren and even some great grandchildren that are, that are really uh, proud of their their uh, grandfather's fathers. Yeah. It'll be quite the night. The book is Forgotten Champions, the story of the 1951 BYU basketball team. Rocky, thank you. Thank you, Dave.